Remembrance Sunday service, we are starting to sing together from our hymn book, hymn number 279, 279, CGS. You are welcome to the house of the Lord on this wonderful day. We thank God for today. We are expecting a brighter tomorrow. For our internet audience, you are equally welcome. May the Lord bless you wherever you are. We usually join the country on a day like this to commemorate the fact that some people lost their lives in fighting different wars and battles so that we can have peace and freedom. And as the whole country is doing that, our church, not actually just this one, all our churches all around the country, we are doing the same thing by joining in this special service for the Remembrance Sunday. And we want to pray that the Lord will remember each and every one of us and continue to bless us with peace, which we need more than anything. And um, of course, we want to pray that we have that Prince of Peace to reign in our heart. When it's in our heart, there will certainly be peace. And it's about him that we want to sing more um, on this morning about the life that he himself gave for us. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed. Let's take verses 1, 4, and 5. Verses 1, 4, and 5 of this first song to 179. Two hundred and ninety-six, two ninety-six. 
when I see the blood, Amen. I will pass. I will pass over you. And that is as a result of the blood of Jesus who died on the cross. Let's take verses 1 and 4. Verses 1 and 4 sitting down, 296. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross. Hundred and sixty six from the same hymn book. There is a fountain yes. filled with blood. Yes. That fountain is drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Yes. And when sinners plunge beneath that flood, all their guilty stains are washed away. Yes. May the Lord please do that for us today. Yes. Let's take again verses one and five. Verse 1 and verse 5 of 266. Seventy-eight, two seventy-eight. It is finished. Yeah. Hear the dying Savior cry. Since the dying words record, it is finished. Let's say verses one and two only of this one. Verses one and two. Hark the voice of love and mercy. 
Thanks aloud from Calvary. Amen. 278, verses 1 and 2. Hundred and eighty three two eight three. Again, sitting down, great high priest, we see this two pain with our names upon thy breast. Nothing but thy blood, O Jesus, can our wayward souls convert. Let's take verses one, all the three verses of this, all the three verses of this sitting down. All the three verses of 283. Some before prayer is from the same hymn book, 271 to 171. He died of a broken heart for you. 
Have you read the story of the cross where Jesus bled and died? Let's stay verses 1 and the last, just those two verses standing up at the end of which Isaac will come forward to lead us in congregational prayer. To 171, we sing verses 1 and the fourth one. Those two standing for those who can manage to stand up. And then we have the congregational prayer, 271. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You died of a broken heart. Amen. You gave your life for us. In some of the songs you're asking, what have we given you? You brought great griefs to us. What have we brought? Lord, nothing have we brought but our heart. Help us, O oh Lord, Amen. to surrender our hearts Amen. to you. We thank you for this country. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that uh, some people have fought to get peace. But you are the prince of oh, peace. Yes. Oh, yes. We thank, thank you because you died for the whole world. Yes. That anyone and everyone who will repent of his or her sins will have peace. Peace from the heart. Oh. Wonderful it will be if the whole world have that peace, then there will be no war. We know a time is coming when that will happen on this world, on this earth. We want to be in that kingdom. Amen. Lord, count us worthy. Amen. We cannot but remember the families of the fallen, those who are still alive, or those who are wounded. Yes. Father, take care of them. Amen. Amen. Let Amen. everyone know that you are the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. That we can vote our life for you. Yes. We hand over the service to you. Yes, Father. Lord, give us a great revival. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Touch every heart. Amen. Those who are not here, but their hearts are with us. Solve their problems Amen. too. Let your word come out with power. Amen. Meet the need of every one of us. Amen. Let us go home rejoicing. Amen. We know you are able to do Thank it. You, Take the glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. scripture reading comes from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 11 through 15. Hebrews chapter 9, 11 to 15. 11. But Christ, being come and high priest of God of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, twelve, neither by the blood of gods and cows, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place. Have obtained eternal redemption for us. Thirteen, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, mm -hmm. sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Mm -hmm. 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, God. purge your conscience mm -hmm. from dead works, to serve the living God. 15, our last verse. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the new statement, of testament, sorry, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Talk to me.
as you drop it by the sea. Let me follow in the footsteps that draw the shore. to read verse 18. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore. Yes. Amen. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. As we remember the heroes and war veterans, those that have given their lives to fight for peace and have lost their lives in that battle or war, and those that, of course, are wounded, who have done all this for you and I, so that we can enjoy true and real freedom, as we think of them and appreciate the sacrifices they made, we pray once more that for those that are dead, that the Lord God Almighty will reward their family with peace of heaven. Amen. And for those that are wounded, that are still alive, that God will give them true peace in their heart. Amen. And of course, that the Lord will heal them. As we all know, it was um, Amistice Day on Friday, a day to remember Amistice referring to ceasefire or a day of resolution when guns of war felt silence at the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month of year 1918. 
For many years back now, it has been the practice that every year we remember that. And I think it is worth remembering. Don't you think so? Yeah. Can just imagine people with guns and artillery against each other, and then ceasefire was declared. We were told that um, so many people lost their lives in World War I, World War II, and later conflicts. Some of us will probably remember how the Tower of London marked the 100 year anniversary of the outbreak of World War I. It is a fantastic um, picture to behold. I um, read that um, that thing that they did for that remembrance was made with 888,246 ceramic red poppies that they arranged. And they have named it Blood Swept Lands and Seas of Red. Um, I was trying to read a little bit more about this, and I was wondering whether we can get a picture of it without the copyright infringement, and we did get one without any, which um, should come up now if they can still find it. And as you look at that, if it is very clear and plain to you, you cannot but just think what is being depicted here. And it's a proper name to say it is blood swept lands and seas of red. That image reminds me of another thing. That image reminds me of another blood that poured out like that. Everything. Just pouring out. Just pouring out. And on this Remembrance Sunday, I think we can still focus on another fountain that is filled with blood. Yes, yes it is true. It's a day that we remember what bloody conflicts, bloody wars, and all that happened, and that has come and gone, and we are remembering that, and it is worth remembering, but there is something, again, that I think is even more important, because as a result of that blood that was shed, peace was purchased for the entire world. Amen. Not just for the country, of Great Britain or some other allied countries um, in that war. There's that fountain drawing from Emmanuel's veins, and that is no, none other but the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I think we should think, I think we should ponder a bit about that on this day. He himself was a hero, Jesus Christ, was a war veteran. He fought our battles so that we can have peace. Not only peace, so that we can have eternal peace. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. And freedom and reign with God in the end. He himself fought that battle alone as the commander in charge, as the captain, as the warrior. And as we have read here, he did live, he did die. But praise God, Amen. he arose. Amen. And as we have read, it says that, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Oh, I praise God for that. That after his death, he ceased, he took, he's in charge. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He's in charge yes. of the keys. I don't know how many of them. Keys of hell and of death. Can you imagine? Jesus Christ, our captain, our Lord and Savior, is the one in charge of that, our Father. Mm -hmm. 
And no wonder he says, it is finished. The end of that conflict. Yes. It is finished. Amen. The battle is over. Amen. If there is anyone here this morning that still has battle and um, conflict and issues in your life, we want to let you know that Jesus Christ has declared it is finished. Amen. Those battles may not even be with another person. You know there is something called internal battles? Internal wars that is going on within you? Praise God Amen. for Jesus Christ Amen. who has come. Lest we too forget on this Remember Sunday, we want to cast our mind back to Calvary. That songwriter said, lest I forget thine agony, thy love, lead me to Calvary. Amen. Let us just spend a bit of time this morning before we go on our knees to focus on Calvary. To focus on the blood gushing out from the crown of thorns. It is difficult to imagine Talking to um, a minister yesterday, we were sharing experiences and we were saying that, you know, many times we cannot, unless you are in the shoe, you cannot just understand this perfectly. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. We know he went through that blood, blood. This is something that people don't like to talk about. They don't even like to look at. But this particular blood, you need it. Yes. This is a different blood Amen. entirely. The blood of Jesus, his suffering, his humiliation, the blood that came out of his pierced side. We want to survey together the scriptures and remind ourselves of the purpose of the shed blood of Christ and the power that is in that blood. So that perhaps we still have some people that are unable or yet to realize the power in that blood. Perhaps today you and I can rethink and understand that we have all the power in the world behind us in the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that he actually purchased the church, you and I, as members of the church, with his own blood. Without that blood, we won't be talking about the church. No. I have about, um, dozen, about a dozen reasons that I want to share with you, which I want to believe some of you know already. But I think we still want to, since it's a day of remembrance, a day to remind ourselves of certain things, perhaps you know them, perhaps some may be new to you. I just want to go through this with you before we go on our knees to go and appreciate and pray to thank him Amen. and bless him Amen. and have a new commitment that you who has done this for me, I will live for you all the rest of my life. Amen. Without the blood of Jesus, there is no cleansing, no amount of blood, no amount of any other cleansing agent. <laughs> Just as we found in 1 John 1, 7, he uses his blood to cleanse us from all our sins. Without the blood of Jesus, our sins cannot be washed away. Revelation 1.5 tells us that. Without the blood of Jesus, there is no remission. There is no sending forward. There is no putting away of our sins. We thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. If we want to be saved from the wrath that is coming, and it is coming, and it is looming, Romans 5 9 tells us that it is only the blood of Jesus that can save you and I from the wrath of God that is, will soon be poured upon this world. Without the blood of Jesus, there is no redemption. There is no buying back that which has been sold to the devil. But praise God. Amen. The blood of Jesus is still flowing today. Amen. It's still available. Amen. We have redemption. Just as was made clear 
in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. You want to have peace with God? You want to reconcile with God? You cannot approach God without the blood. You cannot settle the issue between you and God without the blood. So reconciliation comes through the blood of Jesus. Colossians 1.20 You know it's only people that have their robe white and clean that will be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And yet, we cannot have our robe made white without the blood of Jesus. Revelation 7, 14. That passage that we read actually tells us, if you go back to our Bible reading, the book of Hebrews. If you go to Hebrews chapter 9, to remind ourselves of what we read together again in that uh, um, from verse 12 says, Neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal. I love that. It's not a temporal one. Even right now, you can think of many conflicts and battles and wars that are going on. War continues. But with this our Lord Jesus Christ, when he says it is finished, it is finished. And he gives eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls, verse 13, and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more are referring to the way it was done in the Old Testament, which God was accepting of animals. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, and this is where we are going, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You want to have a purged conscience, a conscience void of offense toward God and man, plead for the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is able to do that. Does that worth remembering? Does that worth pondering about? May God help us not to forget. Amen. Those that are already enjoying this, they must remember that they need to praise him. And those who are yet to enjoy this, we want to assure you today that there is hope for you. Amen. There is hope for you. We've been talking about sin, sin, sin. Jesus Christ is blood that is shed for us, cleansing us, washing us. And after that, we also know from the word of God that we can go deeper with the Lord. And we can be sanctified holy. Again, you can't just be sanctified without the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 13, 12. Made that clear. Jesus, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. He suffered without the gate. Is there anyone here that has been praying for his sanctification? Plead for the blood of Jesus today. Amen. Use your blood to sanctify me, Jesus. Use your blood to make me holy, Jesus. I want to be perfect. Then we talk about having been sanctified, you can still go deeper with the Lord. And in Hebrews 10, 19, we read there that um, we can have the boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. The holiest here in the olden days, in the uh, olden days worship, the holiest of all, where you enter Jesus Christ at his death made a way and access through his blood yeah. that you and I can enter. And we can now have the fullness of God. We can have the spirit of God yeah. dwelling in our hearts. Yeah. If you are looking for your experience of Holy Ghost baptism, may I encourage you to focus again on the suffering, on the blood of Jesus Christ yeah. that is shed for us. 
Ephesians. Let's open to Ephesians for another understanding of the power of this blood. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 12. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 says that that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Hallelujah, verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Far off, before. Far off, alienated, strangers, have no hope, without God. Is that your situation? Is there anything in that description that has to do with your life? There is power in the blood of Jesus to draw you nearer. Plead for the blood. Plead for the blood. Through that blood we can be drawn nearer. The popular one that we all know, another important aspect of this blood, without the blood, no healing for us. With the stripes that he received, we are healed. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are. In the hospital, the blood applies. At home, the blood applies. In every situation, the blood applies. Amen. If you will look up to the blood of Christ, that is worth remembering. Then there was a time in the book of John chapter 6 when Jesus was preaching and then he told the disciples that gathered and he said, except you drink my blood. And of course, the aspect of eat my flesh is there too. And the Bible records that when people heard that, they said, what blasphemy? What was he saying? And the Bible records that many people decided not to follow him again. May we not do that. Amen. May God give us understanding. Amen. Naturally, we know Jesus Christ will not be referring to uh, uh, cutting me and draining a cup of blood and drink. He wasn't referring to that. If you drink my blood, he said that you will have life, eternal life, and will be raised up at the last day. I want to cry and tell Jesus, please give me your blood to drink. Amen. Give me your blood to drink. Amen. Wash me with your blood. Amen. Cleanse me with your blood. Amen. Soak me in your blood. Amen. He has a way of doing that. He has done it for so many people. The blood of Jesus. So if you want to be raised up at the last day, you need the blood of Jesus. That is worth remembering. Hebrews 12, 24 tells us that his blood actually speaks of better things. Amen. Better things. Amen. The blood of Jesus. When you compare that with the blood of Abel, the blood of Abel cries out for vengeance. We remember Jesus Christ when he was on the cross. He wasn't asked God to strike down dead the people that crucified him. He was pleading that God would forgive them. So the blood of Jesus pacifies God. The blood of Jesus purifies conscience. The blood of Jesus pleads for mercy. The blood of Jesus speaks of pardon. The blood of Jesus speaks of peace for souls. No wonder we say, mark me, purge me, use your blood, the blood of Jesus. We thank God for the blood of Jesus. We thank God for the blood of Jesus. Returning to the book of Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Another reason why you need to plead the blood of Jesus. 
Verses 20, from verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Let's see what that blood will do for you and can do for me. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Many people are struggling with this right now. To do the will of God, to be perfect. Have you included in your pleading, in your prayers, the blood of Jesus? I want to be perfect. I know your blood. Through your blood, I can be made perfect. Amen. Through your blood, you can help me to do good work. Amen. According to the will of God. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 The blood of Jesus. Amen. There is power. Yes. That blood of Jesus contains everything that you and I need to survive in this world. To live a life of peace. A life of true freedom. A life of victory. It's all in the blood of Jesus. And no wonder we are warned in Hebrews 10, 29, that a sore punishment is awaiting those who have counted the blood of this covenant an unholy thing. Those who will not appreciate the blood of Jesus. May God help you and I today Amen. and say, Jesus, I thank you for your blood. Amen. I don't know when last you and I actually say, Jesus, I thank you for your blood. May we use today a day of remembrance to cry to God, I thank you for your blood that you shed for me. And finally, the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Revelation 12, reading from verse 11. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. If we, for us to really appreciate that verse, let's go back a little bit. Look at just verse 10. The rest is cumulating in that verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren. That accuser is still here. The accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. That accuser is the devil, and is still alive and active. And verse 11 is telling us we can overcome him. We can overcome the devil. We can overcome Satan and all his emissaries. Through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is powerful. No wonder perhaps many people are living a defeated life. Therefore rejoice, verse 12. Ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. No wonder some people still have this woe. And of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Just look around the work of the devil today. But praise God, yes. there is deliverance. Yes. We, we can be set free. Yes. The power of the devil can be canceled. Yes. I saw that on Wednesday in our house. I actually saw that. It's not too much to always tell God, cover my house with your precious blood. Cover my car with your precious blood. Cover my children with your precious blood. Cover me with your precious blood. Mark everything that I have. Let it be a trademark on all my belongings. The blood of Jesus. When the enemy will come with, in his great wrath. That's what the Bible says. Having great wrath. That wrath has not been diminished. 
and is really just facing everybody he can face. But the consolation is that there is the blood of Jesus. Amen. There is the blood of Jesus. Amen. If you come to our kitchen, for those that you called in to come in, and you see how fire took different things and left different things, you, you, you'll be amazed. And I just have to conclude that, well, these are the things that God wants this fire to take. These are the things. Maybe I believe God wants this fire to take. Why not this? Why not that? Why not that? There is power yes. in the blood of Jesus. Yes. Brethren, let us remain covered. Whether we, whatever we do, whatever happens, God will always be there to defend us. Yes. The whole of that personage will have been burnt down. Just down. Completely. They just took part of the kitchen. We still have, have part of our kitchen standing. They took part and burnt all those movable things all around. The kettle, the freezer, the, 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 the fridge, the washing machine, the, the, all those portable, portable things. Just destroy those ones and some of the cupboards. But nothing stopped that fire from going into the main house. But I believe Jesus was present there. Yes. Jesus was there. Yes. A fire that can break double glaze of the kitchen. Shattered. And then you wonder, I bet this is an open plan kitchen and it's your house. It's church house. You know the place. It's open plan. The kitchen and the dining is free for the fire to come this way. But it didn't. It stopped just there. The blood, I, I, I thank God for the blood of Jesus. Amen. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Yes. I don't know what you are going through right now. I don't know what is your situation right now. I can recommend to you on this day of remembrance that there is power in the blood of Jesus. Calvary stream is still flowing. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Amen. That was true then. It is true today. Amen. Do you feel like thanking the Lord for this blood? Do you feel like drinking of this blood? Do you feel like still dipping yourself deeper and deeper in that blood? Do you feel like asking him to use that blood to cleanse you, to wash you, to sanctify you? I can assure you that that blood has never lost its power. It is flowing here right now. You are invited to the altar to come and pray and plead for that blood or thank God for that blood. There is opportunity for you to be washed and be cleansed by the blood of Jesus today. God bless you as you pray.
thank you for this great opportunity reminding us once again about the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for that blood, O oh Lord. Cover us with that blood, O oh Lord. Just like people in the world go for insurance. We want to renew our insurance in that blood. Lord, have mercy upon us, O oh God. As we kneel down to appreciate you, O oh Lord. Come down in a mighty way, O oh Lord. Cover us once again, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.